Hello and welcome. This is from the CBN. We bring to you weekly reports and expert analysis of the actions, policies, events and economic initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. I'm William Isidada. The Central Bank of Nigeria last week, Thursday, 18th of August, held the grand finale of the very first Inaira Hackathon at the International Conference Center, Abuja. The central bank's digital currency, the e Naira, is the first to be launched on the African continent and the second in the world. The e Naira hackathon brought together computer programmers, graphic designers, software developers, project managers, interface designers, and technology solution providers among the top 20 finalists who made presentations before a panel of judges for a chance to win. We have highlights of that event in today's episode. Stay with us. About 5,000 startups registered during the preliminary round of the Inara Hackathon, taking up the challenge to create concepts and use cases that will enhance the acceptance and use of the Inara by the general populace. The Inara Hackathon served to flag up the second phase of the Inara project of the Central Bank of Nigeria and to affirm the commitment of the Apex Bank to developing the financial sector, driving financial inclusion by onboarding the unbanked and the underserved users, leveraging offline channels. At the opening ceremony of the Inara Hackathon Grand Finale, Central Bank of Nigeria's Deputy Governor, Economic Policy, Dr. Kingsley Obiera, who is also the chairman of the Inara team, pointed out one of the three major patterns in the world that led to the introduction of the digital currency, emphasizing that it was a deliberate and well thought out move. So the first is that uh, the use of cash as a means of payment is declining worldwide. In fact, a report by the Global Payments uh, 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 Group in the UK says that for the first time in a while, uh, payments by uh, wallets and digital means now exceed payments by cash. And in fact, uh, for next year, only 13% of in-store payments will be made by cash. And this, you know, global number differs from country to country. So in South Korea, for example, 77% of them no longer use cash. They just uh, use uh, digital means. Whereas in the Philippines, it's only 30%. So in Nigeria, we're also seeing the same uh, decline in the use of cash. I know we like cash in Nigeria, but it's been the same. For example, the... Uh, minting of currencies in the central bank has been reducing gradually over the last couple of years so alongside this uh, um, reduction in the use of cash has also been an explosion in uh, electronic uh, business and e-business so we have seen the value of e-business grow from say 393 billion in 2014 to about 2.4 trillion now and so if you look at this movement, you find that the central banks in the world have decided to sort of step to the plate and respond to the yearnings of private citizens. And that is why over 96% of central banks are now reputed to either be working on uh, digital currencies or have already done so. And the Central Bank of Nigeria under the very able and visionary leadership of our governor decided that we cannot but be the first to do this. And I would like all of us to please give uh, the governor and all the team a, a big round of applause for leading the way on this. A lot of central banks are trying to copy what we have done in the Central Bank of Nigeria with the launch of the e Naira. Um, and we've received quite a few banks on study team uh, missions. But we're not resting on our oars. We're trying to improve it, which is the reason that we did this uh, hackathon. The group head, Africa Fintech Foundry, Mr. Daniel Awe, whose company worked with the CBN to organize and actualize the Inara Hackathon, noted that the Apex Bank has transformed from a traditional regulator to a smart and innovative one. The hackathon, um, in a simple way, it's a platform that brings entrepreneurs, coders, developers, and um, 
product managers together to solve problems, to create use cases, to innovate and build new business model. All over the world, there's always been a lot of um, discrepancy, a lot of divergence between innovators and regulators for obvious reasons. The regulators look at all the aspects of innovation. They look at the impact on financial stability. They look at impact of the innovators, innovations on consumers. They look at it from risk perspective. While most innovators, most startups, they only see the opportunity in their ideas. And that has been a major problem globally. But we have a central bank that has moved a, a, a lot step further and say, you know what? We are ready to work with innovators. We are ready to work with problem solvers. From ground up, we are ready to create products that will transform our digital market. And with this, we think there's going to be a lot more new ideas that will create jobs, that will create employment, and bring in values into our financial services. The chief host of the Inera Hackathon, Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, was full of praise for the Inera team for their commitment and for working tirelessly to bring the Inera project to fruition. The CBN governor informed that both the banked and unbanked Nigerians can now open the improved Inara wallet and carry out transactions by simply dialing star 997 ash on their mobile phones. The CBN is strategic in charting the future of Nigeria's legal tender, be it in its traditional or digital form, as the economy transits to a digital one, as well as charting the course for innovation in the financial sector and in the infrastructure underpinning financial markets. Hence, the importance of getting the balance right between innovation and, st and stability. Against this background, the launch of Inara was timely and strategic in complementing the various diversification and digitization initiatives of the federal government, including the launch of the Nigeria Digital Economy Policy and Strategy, the National Broadband Strategy, as well as the introduction of the Startup Bill and host of others. As simply encapsulated in a popular mantra, the Naira is the same Naira with far more possibilities. The Inara will make a significant pos positive difference to Nigeria and Nigerians. Specifically, the Inara is expected to enhance financial inclusion, support poverty reduction, enable direct welfare disbursement to citizens, support a resilient payments ecosystem, improve availability and, as and, as and, as and usability of central bank money, facilitate diaspora remittances, reduce the cost of processing cash, and reduce cost and improve efficiency of cross-border payments, among others. The Inara was also developed to provide Nigerians with a cheap, safe, and trusted means of payment. Unlike the offline payment channels like the agent networks, USSD, wearables, cards, and near-field communication technology, the INARA would give access to financial services to, to the underserved and unbanked segments of the population. Innovative products and services built on the INARA will enhance Nigerians' participation in the digital technology economy and promote further development of a version in fintech ecosystem in Nigeria. To achieve this set of objectives, the project adopted a first approach with the first phase focusing on banked users, while the policy objective of the second phase borders around financial inclusion. In addition, the Inara platform possesses an innovation layer for products and services to be built with the aim of en enhancing Nigeria's participation in the digital economy and promoting for that development of a Bojan and Fintech ecosystem. Since the launch of, I, of this great initiative, 
The Naira has attained 840,000 downloads with about 270,000 active wallets, comprising over 252,000 consumer wallets and 17,000 merchant wallets. In addition, volume and value of transactions on the platform have been remarkable, reaching above 200,000 and 4 billion Naira respectively. Notwithstanding this appreciable progress, the second phase of the project has begun and is intended to drive financial inclusion by onboarding the unbanked and underserved users leveraging offline channels. Hence, greater success is envisioned for the project with phase two expected to deliver more gains with a target of about 8 million active users based on estimations using the diffusion of innovation model. When you run a business in Nigeria, cash collection can be such a big deal. At first, it was just you and the product. And then you have a shop, then 10 more shops, in 10 different locations, in 5 different towns. Wow, that's 50 cash points. And 50 cash points could need 150 different cashiers to manage. Now, that's a big business. With bigger cash collection demands, that's where we come in. Introducing eNaira Web Wallet. It makes managing cash collection as easy as ABC. Yes, three simple steps. We help you with one, set up, two, onboarding, and three, start your cash collection. With all your cashiers in point, all your customers have to do is this. Walk up to a cash point, scan the QR code, the amount, and bam, your money is here just like that. We provide 247 support for any issues that may arise. We're just a phone call away, or you can also email us. No matter how much the business grows, we're here to grow with you and help you collect more cash every step of the way. E-Naira. Same Naira, more possibilities. Thanks for staying tuned. You're watching From the CBN, a weekly program that brings to you reports and expert analysis of the actions, policies, events, and economic initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. From about 5,000 interested participants who registered to take part in the Inara Hackathon, 20 teams made it to the grand finale, 10 were selected after their presentations, but only three emerged to winners. Here's the excerpts of the top three concepts. My name is Sheyi Ejirishi. I'm representing Team 67 Register, and I'm giving a presentation on RailsPay. It's an application or a solution we design to facilitate the adoption of the e era. Why do we have low adoption rates of the e era? Why are people not bringing it on board? And we decide at this point that we have to design a system which will facilitate payment transaction in a lot of other areas where people do their businesses, where people relate with daily pay bills and everything. If we have such platforms integrated as part of the in era and they use in era as their digital currency, this will promote adoption. And one of the reasons why is that if everything you have to do is from a single spot with the in era, the adoption rate will increase. Another thing we consider in this application is to ensure that the users have a way to do transactions where they don't rely just solely on cash but a digital medium. And we targeted users of smartphones, users that are savvy with technology and uses app, and even also users that carries out transaction on a daily basis. We also realized that agency banking today has taken a whole lot. People do transaction a lot on POS. You just walk to a little kiosk out there, you see somebody banking on POS and he wants to cash out pay, you submit ATM. People are moving gradually from ATM into POS. So we ask ourselves, if you onboard a cash out process into the e era, we have people directly from their e era wallet and go straight to a POS machine with an agent and cash out their pay or carry out transaction, that we encourage adoption also. And also finally, we introduce cross-border payments. So on the cross-border payment part, 
somebody can be in Ghana, somebody can be in another country, and he wants to do a transaction, maybe a cash transaction or a payment. How do I get this? We introduced a way you can use the eNaira to make that possible. All the person needs to do is to go down with his eNaira app, initiate the transaction. We have merchants already embodied into the system who have the same app to validate this transaction and give the cash out. I, when I show the demo, I'm going to show some of all these functionalities we have on the eNaira application facilitating app with design called Rails Pay App. So how does the solution work? The solution starts by embodying the users, takes them in and it registers them into the eNaira module application within the app. From the eNaira module application, the users can do several things that ranges from cash withdraw from withdrawal into his eNaira, from his eNaira wallet to his bank and deposit to his eNaira wallet. Because at the initial point where you onboard, you onboard just like you do with the eNaira, you tie your bank account to it. From there, on that app alone, that single point of app, you can do cash out transactions. You can also do cross-border payment transactions. Thanks to the organizers of the hackathon, we are able to use APIs to also integrate the POS payment and also MTN Momo payments with the API provided. We are able to integrate it, which I'm going to show on the demo. My name is Shaliwa Williams. I am the product manager representing Team 70 Registered. And I'll be talking about the solution, um, stroke products, more health services. Now, what is more health services? More health services is a solution that is focused on increasing access to high quality and cost effective healthcare services. Now, before I just go right into the slides, um, we've listened to very interesting presentations on um, fintech and payment, but there's a saying that health is wealth, right? If you are not healthy to a very large extent, many of us will not be able to attend this event. So our solution is on something that really affects um, us as humans, and we're trying to look for a way to improve the lives of people. Now, statistics show that 77% of Nigerians pay out of pocket for healthcare services. Also, 84 million Nigerians don't have access to healthcare services. So that is a challenge. Now, the impact you're trying to focus on is providing a basic level of health insurance benefits to every Nigerian. And we may ask, how do we go about it? So we've created a platform, a tech platform, that would help to facilitate the management of health insurance subscriptions via telecommunication companies using the CBN's eNaira account. So looking at a figure of 750 Naira per month, which is 25 Naira per day, people can have access to an HMO that covers a lot of you know, these benefits that include outpatient care, drug supply, pharmacy supply, emergencies, etc. So for 9,000 Naira a year, and when you look at it on a much larger scale, people can have that benefit because insurance is a numbers game. Number two, we're solving a social problem like I mentioned earlier. Health is the intrinsic part of everyone and it's important for people to be able to access healthcare services when they need to. Number three is built around people's lifestyle. When we look at airtime and data, there's, there's a, you know, a saying that data is everything because people need to be online, people need to make phone calls, that's in for people that are not tech savvy. And over the last 20 years, many people have been able to learn how to recharge their lines. Our solution is focused on airtime. That means by just dialing a code, you can top up your airtime and access healthcare services. So we took that into consideration. My name is Steven, representing Team 69. I'll be speaking on the problem statement with respect to challenges in the financial services industry at the moment. And so we have come a long way as a country with respect to EFT transactions. Hundreds of millions flow through our electronic system on a daily basis. With these advancements, we've seen some loopholes, settlement challenges, delay in transaction processing, high cost of processing, failures. 
and I'll ask a question. How did you feel the last time you executed the transaction and it failed? Apparently, it was an awful experience. And these are things that we have come to live with. We have come with a solution to address some of these cardinal problems. From us on the Blick Network, we're saying we do no longer have to live with these challenges. These problems are in with respect to efficiency of the people, the basic technological challenges. And what we have come to do is to have a process re-engineering of that whole structure, refine the process, come up with a better solution to address the obvious challenges. And what we have seen we will implement, what we have implemented is the use of blockchain technology powered by Inera. With the various banks coming together as a consortium, who we'll partner with existing switches, ensure that from transaction initiation to settlement dispute resolution, the whole ecosystem is taken care of. What is the process flow? You initiate a transaction. Fundamentally, a name inquiry, name inquiry instruction is executed. With the success of the name inquiry instruction, you go ahead to assess the initiator's account, do passing your regular um, debit with your debit service, ensure that the primary checks are done against the account, and then a middleware credits the internal GL for the initiating bank. Thereafter, the Blink middleware service encrypts that message routed through the blockchain network. Interestingly, our blockchain is a distributed ledger. And the benefit is that it is, has it's an internet of value. In other words, all the parameters required to ensure the immutability of that transaction is encoded in the blockchain. And so with that basic fundamental of immutability and non-repudiation of your transaction, you are certain that once the transaction is initiated and the name inquiry service pulls through, you already have a successful transaction. Are you scared of initiating transactions during public holidays? I am. Are you scared of initiating transactions on Fridays? I am. Black Fridays, definitely I wouldn't try it. But here we have a scenario where you can successfully execute your transactions reliably and then you realize that because adoption is based on trust, trust is based on reliability. Once we have a reliable financial service sector, the ecosystem for transactions, adoption will be a no-brainer. Scoring 567, 568, and 571 points respectively. Teams 70, 69, and 67 registered emerged as the Inara Hackathon top three taking home the prize monies. Congratulations, two million Naira to second runner-up, received by Omoshalewa Osamudiyame Williams. First runner-up with a score of 568. Team 69 registered. Led by Stephen Ohiomoba. They cut away a cash prize of 3 million Naira. Congratulations. The winner of the maiden edition of the E Naira Hackathon, organized by the Central Bank of Nigeria in collaboration with the Africa FinTech Foundry. Let's make some noise for Team 67 registered with a score of 571. The best. Led Number by Shei Ojuayitsi. Lead me to my destiny. I have waited. Congratulations, Andy Wen. I have vision 
a cash prize of five million naira. Congratulations to the winners of the Inera Hackathon. And that's all we have from the CBN this week. Report on resolved banking issues to the CBN Consumer Protection Department using the email address cpd at cbn.gov.ng attached relevant documents. Call the CBN contact center on the phone line plus 234-700-2255-226 local courier to me apply. Send your comments and inquiries to the dedicated email address from the CBN at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter for updates and to watch uploaded episodes of the program. We invite you to join us again next time. I'm William Missy Dada. Stay safe and bye for now. <laughs>